friends, Mars here. Back for another spinning vlog. I am going to take an opportunity to start plying my yarn. So you've seen my spindles, you've seen my fiber and fiber prep and even some spinning. And now I'm going to take my two single plies and ply them together into a two ply. It's uh, raining right now. So instead of waiting for better weather, I'm actually a big fan of thunderstorms. I like doing cozy making things. So I'm gonna take the opportunity now to ply some yarn. And I figured I'd show you a few of the steps. I use a lot of um, DIY and homemade tools when possible. I'm all for good handcrafted tools as you've seen in my previous vlog, but today for plying, I'm going to use this shoe box right here. And I've used it several times. You can see the holes in it. To hold my spindles, either for um, winding off some yarn or for plying like I'm about to do now. And I'll show you how I kind of put things together. The, the idea is I want the spindles to be able to rotate so that I can pull the singles off of them and ply them together on a separate third spindle. Which in this case, um, I think what I want to do is try out my new spindle for plying. I like to use this heavier spindle for plying because it holds so much more on the shaft. So as I'm thinking about this on the fly here, I think I'm going to wind off this single onto another little homemade bobbin and then put it into my homemade Lazy Kate and ply off of there. Okay, sharing a bit of the in-between process here with you. I used a paper towel roll that was kind of a, actually not a paper towel roll, I apologize. This is from an aluminum foil. And I took this and cut it in half and then I weighed it. And I wrote on here that the roll itself weighs 10 grams. I cut a little notch in the top and that notch lets me just position the fiber in there to hold it to begin so that I can use it like a bobbin and spin fiber onto this bobbin off of my spindle. Now I'm using this as an example so you can see really clearly what's happening. And if I give you a closer shot of what's happening in my Lazy Kate slash spindle holder, I'll show you that. Just for demonstration, I'll let you see the process there. I essentially have it stuck through the two sides of the shoe box so that it can spin freely. And I'm just spinning it just spinning it onto this bobbin and I can do the same thing with this bobbin by putting a knitting needle through it or any kind of long slim object a top, a chopstick I can put it through those same holes to wind it off of this bobbin so I'm essentially doing this so that I can empty that spindle and I could use it for plying if I need to. This is some Tunis fiber. I showed it to you on a spindle last time. Tunis is an American sheep breed. It's often called the American Tunis. I'm learning a lot about it in the Fleece and Fiber source book, which is a great reference for learning about different breeds, the types of fleece that come from those breeds, and the types of yarn that you can spin 
from different preparations of that fleece. It's a great resource. And sometimes that happens because the holes eventually start to wear out, but it's an old shoebox, so I don't really care. I can just make another hole. There we have it, a small bobbin's worth of Tunis fiber, single ply. This was fun for me because it was a brand new to me fiber from Tar Heel Billy Farm. And it's very elastic. I've plied up some of it and I really enjoy the, the resulting yarn. So at some point I may invest in a Lazy Kate, of course. I may decide that that's a tool that's worth having, but so far um, not having one hasn't kept me from being able to do what I need to. What you're looking at now, um, what you're seeing on the camera now is a another version of a homemade Lazy Kate. <laughs> it's a Tinker Toy version. Tinker Toy is a brand, I think it's pretty well known in North America, but it's a brand of build-it-yourself toys that comes with lots of different pieces. And the idea is that you can put those pieces together and make really cool things, things that spin, things that move. Um, in this case, I've turned it into a Lazy Kate with some help from friends on Instagram. When I first showed this, I got some great suggestions about how to make the pieces and parts work together. If you know a Lazy Kate, it is essentially a place to hold bobbins. And um, those bobbins sit in such a way that you can pull the plies of yarn off of them. So here's some, and here's some. And the Lazy Kate allows the bobbins to rotate while you're pulling that yarn off of the bobbin. And in this case, it works really well for my two-ply yarn because I can take the two strands, kind of line them up, and pull them off of the bobbins individually, and then ply them onto my spindle. I don't have an empty spindle yet. I'll have that in just a second. But I got some great suggestions like weighting the two sides down so that it wouldn't easily move, um, separating the bobbins enough that the plies are not likely to get tangled back here before I get them to the spindle. Just some really good ideas. The whole point of this is <laughs> where there's a will, there's a way. So I was able to figure out some um, a good use for some things I already had here at home. I'm setting up and I'm thinking because this is a lighter fiber it's easy for you guys to see. I'm just doing a slip knot. I, I put a slip knot in the end of the two plies together and I slid that onto the shaft of this spindle and then I'm going to spin the two plies together and when I started the single plies, I spun in a clockwise or a Z twist direction. But for the two ply, when plying the yarns together, I'm going to spin counterclockwise in an S twist direction. And that's pretty typical. It helps to add twist to the two plies while maintaining the twist that was already in each single. So you can see just barely there. Just an idea of what that two ply yarn is gonna look like. So I'm gonna get to work on it now.
one of the one of the things I try to make sure of is that I keep the plies separate from each other until it's time for the twist to enter them. So you'll see I have my fingers in between the two plies here to keep them apart from each other. And that just makes sure that the twist enters them fairly evenly as I go along. I know it's hard to see some of this <laughs> as I'm doing it, but just so you get the idea. In the next step, the spindle goes back into my little makeshift shoebox lazy cake, and that allows me to wind the yarn off of the spindle onto this knitty knotty. And the knitty knotty is very useful for getting the yarn into a skein format. And it's good to have it in a skein format for the next step, which is to soak or wash the, if the yarn needs a, a wash, you can easily do that when it's in the form of a skein. I'm just going to dunk it in some water. Might use a little wool wash, but this wool wasn't particularly dirty. So once it's on the Nitty Naughty, it makes it really easy for me to create a skein that I can then put into water soak for a little while and that helps to even out the twist any over twisted parts um, it helps to take care of some of that and if the yarn is gonna bloom we'll most likely do that after being soaked and dried so all I'm doing is just using the ends to I'm just securing the ends to the skein a little bit so that they don't float free in the water I take it off the Nitty Naughty, you can see there's a lot of energy in there. I definitely have some high twist going on, but that will all settle out in the wash, or most of it anyway. Uh, I think it was Grace who said in a live the other day that overspun is better than underspun. So lots of energy in there. I'm going to put this in some water. So, while that a little bit of spinning is soaking. I thought I'd show you what the finished item looks like. Actually, both ends of the process. Here's the Tunis fiber. Basically, it came to me uh, as roving, and I kind of pre-drafted it out into this form. Take a little bit off here. I think this has been carded, but not combed, meaning a lot of the fiber is still um, not laying completely parallel, which is totally fine. It's a bit neppy, also fine. Um, it's really squishy, it's really easy to draft and spin. And it's pink, unlike what you saw a moment ago because I dyed it with some avocado pits and peels, and that tends to give a pink or a peach color um, when you don't add any kind of modifiers. So I had already spun up a good amount of this and plied it. We got this. It's not the best color representation. I'll, sh I'll insert a picture. I mainly wanted you to see how the yarn comes out. It's probably a worsted, heavy worsted weight, <laughs> if not Aaron. Um, this yarn has a lot of bounce and I love it. I love how it comes out in the end. I wasn't too worried about spinning fine on this. This is a much better representation of the color of the unspun fiber and the color of the skeins. It had a very deep kind of beige cream color. On screen it might look quite white, um, but it's actually going towards a yellowy beige in the undyed state. So some of that comes through after it was dyed with the avocado skins and pits. And I love it. I can't wait to knit with this. I'm actually trying to be patient and spin up some more of it so that I can have some more yardage and potentially make a hat. Like any new spinner, my yarn has lots of thick and thin spots. It's got weird places, um, throughout and I am okay with that. I've learned that 
being frustrated and pushing myself makes it an experience that's not fun. So I'm really happy with the outcome and I'm gonna keep going. Skein I showed you earlier after being soaked for a while, as you can see, it's got a tiny bit of inclination to twist, but nothing like when it initially came off the Nitty Naughty. Um, just like blocking and knitting, soaking your hand spun can make up for a lot. So that's my two ply, little sample. I'll probably dye this as well with some natural dyes. This is the two ply that I have planned for my project. I'm pretty happy with it. There's thick and thin spots, but it's coming out pretty well. And I wanted to show you an update that I've made to my Lazy Kate. I got this idea from watching Grace of the Babbles Traveling Yarns podcast, and she has some little hooks on the bottom of her Lazy Kate so that the yarn is fed through and tensioned and the little hooks prevent the yarns from being tangled. The plies are not tangled with each other as they're being fed to your spindle for plying or your wheel if you're using a wheel. So I created some little tension um, hooks. They're not really hooks, it's just these pegs. They have slits in them that the yarn can feed through. And so as the plies are coming off of the bobbins, they're going through these hooks, which keeps them very separate from each other while I'm pulling them onto my spindle to ply. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's making the plying process a lot easier. Hoping to be finished with this 35 to 40 grams today. As I'm going through the spinning process, and even with plying, I'm thinking about what tools and techniques are going to help me improve my hand spun over time. It's a constant learning. Do you find that too?
feel like that's a good amount of plying for this session. Don't want to wear my arms and shoulders and wrists out. But I'm loving the way all the colors are coming together, and I hope you've enjoyed it too. This is it. will do my best to post pictures on Instagram at Hey Brownberry as I go through the process of spinning my other yarn, but I'm really glad I was able to share this little bit of the spinning journey with you. I hope you're having an excellent week, and of course, as always, share with me in the comments below anything that you're making or working on. If you're a part of the Spin and Make Along, how's it going? Um, yeah, keep in touch, and I look forward to seeing you in the next vlog. Bye!